It breaks my heart to say this, but you probably don't want to buy the KZSA08 because I appreciate your time. I'm gonna tell you the reasons right now. It's the battery life and the background hiss. We'll talk about the details in a bit, but it's still interesting to see how KZ tried to pack multiple BA drivers in a true wireless earbuds. That's a first, actually. And if you want to support me and the channel, please watch the video till the end and let me know in the comments that you did. I wanna thank you properly. With that said, let's get on with the video right now. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and today we're going to review the earbuds I brought up a while back in my Soundbeats H1 and Feel T1 Pro review. This is the world's first four balance armature true wireless earbuds, the KZSA08. I've been using it for the past couple weeks and how does it sound, right? We'll discuss that in a second, but disclaimers first. Lin Sol did send this to me for review, but rest assured because I will always give you my own honest opinion. And if you want to support the channel, please consider clicking through the links down in the description when you want to buy anything. It doesn't have to be the product linked as I may get a small commission at no extra cost to you. Thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe because I got a lot more reviews coming, including those halos up there. And let's start with the most important thing the sound quality. Now, normally wider soundstage and better instrument separation goes hand in hand. This means you can separate the piano to the guitars easily and at the same time place them, usually the guitars, the instruments are on the sides and the vocals are front and center. The KZSA08 does it differently though. It's almost like you push the detail and separation to the 11 but leave the soundstage untouched. So it ends up with the sound characteristics that puts a lot of focus in the upper mid or whole middle region actually. I always feel like trebles could use a little more push and while the bass is enough most of the time, it's not satisfying enough when you push it with demanding songs. So I'm gonna be comparing the KZ to the Feel T1 Pro in the Soundpeats H1 because I felt like at 60 bucks you can save up just a bit more and get these two which are tried and tested to be great. Yes, the KZ is 54 bucks right now in Linsol, but is it really worth the savings? That's what I want you to answer for yourselves after I tell you everything you need to know. But coming back to the sound, the general rule of thumb is it's all about the details, details, and details. But let's talk about some song examples here so you could listen for yourself and have an idea of how it sounds here. First up, we're going with this song by Ryoko Shoku Shakai because this is one of the song where I first noticed details that I never really noticed before, except here, it is not for the better. What you get is a hyper detailed sounding instruments. So the hi-hats, the subtle guitar strums, the piano improvs, they're distinguishable easier than even the feel or sound piece. But you quickly realize that the vocals, arguably the most important part, is lacking. It's like there's a sudden dip right between the upper mids and the treble, so the female vocal doesn't shine like it should. Even going back to the U Green high tune which I picked up just for fun, which sound stage and separation isn't as good, but the vocals are... I think I prefer the vocals there, seriously. But let's move on to Don't Look Back in Anger by Oasis and take the U Green out of the picture again because it's blown away by the KZ now. I think it performs way better in this type of songs, even though I still want that little bit more push in the vocals, but generally it can actually compete with Soundbeats H1 or the Feel T1 Pro. Soundstage and separation are on par with each other, so that is great there. As for EDM songs like this one, I'll say it's okay, but it won't blow anyone's mind. It's not rumbly, it doesn't reach as deep as even the feel that is already second to Soundbeats, and you see the volume bar right here, Yes, you can crank it up way higher, but the treble goes up with that, which at 60% volume is already piercing enough for me to want to lower it immediately. Now, talking about that volume real quick, this is the loudest, the loudest, and I mean for real, the loudest true wireless earbuds I have heard to date. It's so loud that you have to be careful not to accidentally press play on max volume because you'll go deaf in no time. 
believe me. This trait reminds me of the last KZ I reviewed, the KZ Z1, and with it, all the downsides and then some more. I think it's because the earbuds has a very high gain by default. So not only you get super loud volume, you also get a significant background hiss that is distracting when you listen to quiet songs like this one from IU or this one from Akmu. Like no matter what volume you're at, the hiss will be there with the song. And that is a huge, huge no in my book. And it doesn't end there. You remember what sucks on the KZZ one the most? the battery life. There's this little part of me hoping that this would at least reach four hours since the earbuds are so big, but it turns out no matter which volume I'm listening at, the earbuds always last around two hours and 45 minutes. You can find a detailed breakdown in my Twitter at TestItByKen. And for something selling at 50, 60 bucks, this is purely unacceptable. KZ, please, please put a bigger battery, sort out your chip, do something and make your earbuds last longer. For the build quality and fit, it continues the trend KZ started with the Z1, which means very, very, very sculpted and shaved earbuds so that it would reach every nook and cranny of your ear. Providing support to the rounded rectangle ear tips here, and to be honest, I'm okay with the outer shape. It's just this ear tip sucks in more than what I'd like, and taking it out is a bit annoying every time because it sucks air so much. Whatever they say about the passive noise reduction technology in their website, it's nothing different here, but oh my goodness. Is this earbuds thick? Thick, thick, thick? Which reminds me to the question, why they didn't put a bigger battery again? <sighs> anyway, just like any other KZ products, I can't find any IP water resistance. Even the holes on the earbuds are quite large with no mesh. Fortunately, the inner barrel and the mesh is metal. These are common to KZ earbuds, and it's a combination that I appreciate if the earbuds are 20 to 30 bucks, but at twice that, Many others offer better feature set and sometimes even a full IPX7 water resistance, among other things. Anyway, the case is similar to the Transmart Apollo Bolt and that's fine by me. Matte black color USB-C for charging, a colored LED inside here for battery level, contains 400 mAh battery which doesn't last very long because the earbuds drain battery so quickly. But I usually get one week of use out of these which are fine. My only gripe with round cases like this is I find it more challenging to open the lid. It takes more time to find where I could open it and a lot of times I realize it's just a hinge, not the other way around. But that could be just me. Now, moving on to the controls real quick. As you can see right here, I'll complain one last time because it doesn't have volume control. At this price, no volume control is almost unacceptable. Touch sensitivity is okay though. It's just that the earbuds are so big. Accidental touches tend to happen a lot when I'm handling the earbuds on my hand like this something that I find a need to do whenever I want to talk to someone. Anyway, let's check out the high performance mode in the latency test as well as the call test right now. Shocked by how the vocals, the, the high ends, they lack 
clarity. All right, everyone, welcome to the call test, or should I say it's a microphone test right now because I'm recording with the Voice Memos app. Uh, on my iPhone right now. Currently, it's using the right side of my earbuds, but as these are dual mode, you know, it can use the left side or the right side. So there's no problem to that. And right now, uh, this is kind of an indoor test where there's not much noise around. The only thing that's on is the AC right behind me, but that's also not very loud. So I'm gonna put on a crowd noise right now, put from my MacBook Pro 16 inch at 75% volume to see how the mic performs. Let's put it on right now. All right, so here goes the microphone test with the crowd noise and it's put on in 75%. Can you hear my voice? Can you hear me not? And I hope this test is useful. Alright, that's pretty much it for the call test. Let's get back to the video and we'll get to the conclusion. If only the battery was good enough and there is no hiss, I could probably recommend this for two types of person. One, for those who want the most detail they could get, and two, for those who want the loudest earbuds ever. But those are not happening because the issues are so much for something at this price. And if KZ is listening, fix your battery in the hiss, please. Put in volume control, maybe IPX5, and we will have a much better product in our hands. Here's hoping that the new KZZ1 Pro will have four hours of playtime. At the very least, I put my bar very low there. So there you go, my review of the KZ SA08. What do you think of it? Honestly, this was kind of an unpleasant video to make because I wanted the earbuds to perform well, but sadly, it just straight up fails or cut corners in most parts of the experience. I'm rooting for KZ to improve though, so KZ if you're listening, you can do it, okay? Alright, if you are new to the channel, I highly recommend checking this playlist out. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you appreciate what I do and you want to know more about True Wireless Earbuds. You can also use the links down below to help me support the channel and that is gonna be it for me today. Thank you so much for your support everyone, I'm Kenneth, and I will see you in the next one. Everything you can tell. I was recording and the mic always fell down. It was like, props. They're this strange. Gila, so bad. Gue tuh siapaan sih?